pilots were hearing static on their VHF radios. So they stopped the whole thing. They shut off the Starlink. Why couldn't they model that before putting it on the plane? They did model in the computer how the AM VHF radio the pilot uses and how the Starlink digital radio to the satellites would interact with each other. But these models aren't perfect because real life is complicated. They're putting them on a metal airplane and the metal airplane contains other radios and contains computers and it contains human bodies. And so the computer models, no matter how good they are, they're not going to be perfect. And the, the VHF AM radio, what the pilots use to talk to air traffic control, they pick up every little bit of static. So VHF is, you know, 30 to 300 megahertz. But pilots are only using what's called the air band inside that, which is 108 to 138 megahertz. They've purposely chosen AM radio as the best technology for air traffic control. There's no error correction. If two people broadcast AM radio at the same time, the radio waves mix similarly to the how sound mixes when two people talk. So when you play it on the radio, if two people are talking at the same time, you hear both people talking. That's because AM radios just play whatever they receive. Any radio interference comes right out the speaker as a static they can hear and they complain about. So really subtle effects can be really bad. And so sometimes you model it all and it says it's fine and it's not. And it turns out the issue is simply that the Starlink and the VHF antennas were too close together. Just by moving the Starlink further back on the plane, they got extra space, the static went away, everything's back on. Starlink is back at United. And that's just real world radios. That's how things work sometimes. A funny thing, that if they had started with the bigger planes, they just naturally would have put the antennas further apart and never had any problem. Subscribe for more stories on connectivity and security.